Today's video is on basic investing concepts. This is one of those things that really every working adult should know, but it's very rarely taught in school. So I think we're kind of all in the same boat there, that it's an important thing to know about, but you just simply never told about it. So let's explore some basic concepts to help guide your decision-making process as you're investing and you're growing your retirement savings over the course of your career. Basic topic number one, risk tolerance. Here's the deal. Different investment types have inherently different risk levels. When I say risk, primarily I'm referring to the up and down volatility, right? Of think of it like the stock market, okay? So typically, you know, as an investor, what you need to define first is how much risk am I willing to take in my investments? And that can more generally guide you to different combinations of investments. Now, a lot of the times your risk tolerance will largely be determined by basic concept number two, your time horizon. The longer you have to invest, generally, the more risk you can afford to take. Now, why would you want to take more risk? Well, another basic concept is the risk reward trade-off. Typically, the higher the risk of the investment, the higher expected investment return you should receive. So more risk, more reward in an ideal world. And so therefore, how much risk are you willing to take largely depends on your time horizon. So as I mentioned, different investment types have different risk profiles. So what are some different investment types? So broad categories, right? Stocks. Stocks are typically gonna be riskier asset classes. And even among stocks, you've got different kinds. You've got large companies, you've got small companies, you've got US-based companies, international companies. So stocks as a category are gonna be more risky than bonds or cash. And even among stocks, there are different risk levels. Typically smaller companies and international companies are gonna be riskier investments. Large companies, US-based companies are generally gonna be less risky. Another category of investments, generally bonds. So bonds are gonna be a little bit less risky than stocks. Typically, you're gonna have more and more bond holdings in your portfolio as you approach retirement. And even among bonds, there's different types of bond exposures, right? So you have government US bonds, you have foreign government bonds, you have US company bonds, corporate bonds is typically what we call those. And there's different qualities of bonds. There's high quality investment grade bonds. There's lower quality, sometimes they call high yield bonds. So even within bonds as a more conservative category, there's kind of a pecking order of different risk levels. Another category would be cash. Cash or equivalents, right? So like a money market fund uh, could be considered another asset class that should be among the most conservative. You expect a relatively stable account value, probably a lower but more guaranteed or reliable rate of return on those investment classes. Again, a really conservative investment that you'd have more of in a more conservative portfolio with a shorter time horizon. Another broad category of investment would be alternatives. Alternatives it's really everything that doesn't fall into the previous category, stocks, bonds, or cash. Investments to include real estate, private markets, right? So private equity, private debt, these could be commodities, anything that doesn't fit the, the typical mold of those, those three we mentioned. So people include these in portfolios, usually in lower percentages, kind of as a, a, another means to diversify or to have exposure to different types of investments that behave differently than the bulk of their portfolio. In the event something drastic happens in the market, all your investments won't be headed in one direction. So let's say you define all that, right? So you define your risk tolerance, you look at your time horizon, you're aware of this risk reward trade-off and you wanna go and invest. Another uh, category of investing basics would be portfolio management. If you have this group or this bundle of investments, this portfolio, how should you go about kind of adjusting it over time? Another key concept there would be that of diversification. So let's say you're cruising along, you've got these different investments and you notice, hey, one of them in particular is just really taking off. And you look at your other investments that aren't doing as well, 
And so the natural tendency is to want to go, hey, let me just put everything in that, right? Diversification would want you to not do that. Here's why. The dot-com bubble is one example of a particular investment type, you know, tech stocks, outperforming on everything, right? So this is over the late 90s leading up to the 2000 dot-com crash, right? So if you had put all of your investments, all of your eggs in one basket, so to speak, because that was the top performer, you would have really gotten hit hard during the dot-com crash. Typically, diversification is spreading your investments around in different investment types according to your risk tolerance, such that if any drastic event happens to any one of them, the overall portfolio is not in totally incapacitated. So here you are, you got this diversified portfolio in accordance with your risk tolerance, your time horizon. Here's another thing, how often should you tweak that? How often should you adjust it? What if things get drastic in the market? Should you, should you sell everything? How active should you be in your investments? So this is just another question you have to ask yourself. This is question versus active management versus passive management. Are you going to take a set it and forget it approach? Or are you going to be in there kind of tinkering based on what you think is going to happen in the short term? There are different strategies and there are different philosophies around this. For your average working person who doesn't do this day in and day out, isn't watching the stock market round the clock, typically a passive approach is going to be one that they settle on. An active approach would be more so you hire a manager who does that for you and watches it for you is typically of a higher cost. But that is one concept you need to be aware of is this idea of, of passive management versus active management. Okay, now you're fully armed and equipped with some basic concepts of investing. Go check out our video on 401k investment options. Because if this is something you're wondering, if you have a 401k and you're trying to pick among those options, now maybe you can take these concepts and go make some sense of that.